every interaction you have on the web, from loading this video to accessing data from an API, relies on a fundamental protocol, HTTP, the Hypertext Transfer Protocol. HTTP is the set of rules for communication between web clients like your browser and the servers that host websites and services. I'm Sam Dutton, a developer advocate with the Chrome team, and in this video, I'm going to show you how HTTP works for cookies. So HTTP is based on a really simple request response cycle. It's like a conversation between a client, usually a web browser or an app, and a server hosting the resources you're trying to access. And HTTP provides a standardized set of rules that allow clients and servers to communicate. You know, you could think of it like, well, ordering food in a restaurant. You know, the order is the request and the food is the response. And, you know, there's a kind of a protocol for food ordering, a set of simple rules. You request a dish from a member of staff and, you know, they take your order and they pass that onto the kitchen. And if all goes well, well, you get your meal in response. Anyway, let's take a look at an example on the web. So. Imagine you visit the website cats.example and your browser makes a request to cats.example and by default, the cats.example server responds with the HTML file at the top level of the site cats.example slash index.html. Your browser passes the HTML code in the HTML file and that you know, includes CSS, JavaScript and images. And parsing the HTML triggers your browser to send additional HTTP requests for all the resources on the page, from cats.example and from other sites. You know, that might be a cat image from cats.example, but also maybe a map from catmap.example, and so on. And when an HTTP server, a server that hosts a website, receives a valid HTTP request from a browser, the server responds to the browser with an HTTP response. Requests and responses can include extra information known as HTTP headers. HTTP requests can be augmented with, well, you know, HTTP request headers. And these provide supplementary information from the browser to the web server. For example, the request for the cats.example homepage might include headers like the ones I'll show you now. So this header indicates the user's preferred language, in this case, English, United States. And this header provides details about the user's browsing and operating system. In this case, Mozilla slash 5.0, that's the browser family, CROS, that means Chrome OS operating system, and Chrome slash 134.0.6998.198, and that's the browser version. And a server might access the user agent string to serve different files for users on different platforms. When a web server receives a valid request from a browser, the server sends the browser a response that provides the resource that was requested, and that's known as the body. And it might be HTML, CSS, JavaScript, an image file, video, or, you know, other data. And just as each request from the browser can include request headers, each response from the server can include response headers. And these response headers are sent along with the body. So a response has a header and a body. And this is where cookies come in. A set cookie header included with a response tells your browser to store some text, a name, and a value, and this is known as an HTTP cookie. By design, to keep communication simple and efficient, HTTP is stateless. And that means that every time you open a web page, the website you're visiting has no way of knowing if you're the same person who visited previously. And cookies were invented to solve that problem. In response to the request for cats.example slash images slash cat.jpg, the cats.example server includes the header set cookie theme equals tabby. And this instructs the browser to store a cookie named theme with the value tabby. And that cookie will then be included with subsequent requests to cats.example 
until the cookie expires or is removed. And this allows the server to maintain information about a user across multiple web pages or sessions. For example, that the user currently has, you know, the theme tabby set for the website. So to sum it all up, your browser makes a request to a web server and the server responds with an HTTP response. And that response might include a set cookie header. In other words, the web server asks your browser to store a cookie. And the cookie is stored by your browser and provided in subsequent requests to the server that set it. In those subsequent requests to the same server, your browser will include a cookie header. So be sure to check out all the videos in the Cookie Basics series. And you know, if you're not sure how cookies work, check out our video, What Are Cookies? We have a guide to go with this video and lots more resources on our website to help you understand how cookies work. So thanks for watching.